Well, I think what drew me to the project the most was just the chance to work with Guy Ritchie and, of course, Statham. Um, but I actually think uh, it's just the kind of movie that I've never done before. And so when they pitched it to me and they were like, it's kind of like a spy, James Bond kind of movie with a sense of humor, I was like, yes, because I've never been in an action movie before. And I thought that would be really fun. My character's name is Sarah Fidel, and she is, well, I would, I think she's a private contractor is how you would describe her um, in terms of her job, but she's kind of like a tech whiz. She's the one that's kind of in Jason's ear, you know, telling him like where to go, where the bad guys are, um, hacking into all of the computers and um, but having a good time while she does it. She's a very big sense of humor about it. And um, she, I, I've been describing her kind of like a female James Bond um, kind of character where it's like she's very, very good at her job, but she's kind of always messing around and making jokes. So you kind of think like, oh, is she really gonna be able to pull this off? And she always does because that's what Sarah Fidel does. She saves the world while drinking wine, much like James Bond. I think my character is very competitive. Um, and I think, you know, in the beginning of the movie, she's kind of matched with Orson Fortune, played by Jason Statham. And I think that sh there's a, you know, she wants to prove herself. I think she wants to prove herself. Um, she's among all the men all the time, um, so she's constantly dealing with men. We know how that is. Um, so, yeah, I think she's motivated by, you know, her own ambitious drive to succeed. Something happened to her in her childhood where she was just like, I need to be number one. Um, and even though I'm being paired with Orson Fortune, who is the best, She's like, maybe I'm the best. So I guess we'll see. But I think that's what drives her, is competition. Nathan is kind of, kind of like our boss, um, played by Carrie Elwes. And, you know, he's kind of become the butt of all the jokes. Like, he's kind of, he's like, um, he's like daddy. You know, he's always like reprimanding us and, um, scolding us for drinking too too much expensive wine and telling us what we need to do on our mission and I guess he's watching us from afar I don't see him so I don't know what he actually does I do know that he likes to eat eggs and he likes to sleep in his jammies um, and he I think fancies himself like a very classy man um, but Orson and Sarah just poke fun at him all the time and roll their eyes at him uh, but they love him, much like Carrie L was in real life, you know? We love Carrie, but we also make fun of him because it's just easy. Um, Orson Fortune, obviously, played by Jason Statham, is the number one private contractor, agent, secret spy, agent, killer, weapon machine, man. He's a mystery, man of mystery. Um, not sure what drives him. I think he just wants to go on holiday and drink expensive wine. I think he's just driven by expensive wine. And JJ is played by Bugsy Malone. And he is kind of like a shooter. He's a sniper specialist. He can, I guess, shoot anyone from far distances. And just an all around reliable kind of guy. Um, I think he isn't quite sure about Sarah Fidel. Uh, he's kind of looking at her like, I don't know about this, this woman, but I think in the end that he likes her. Um, but he's sweet. And yeah, we're kind of like this ragtag operation. Maybe we don't do it the normal way, but we get it done in the end. <laughs> we save the world because someone has to do it. Madness. Just everyday madness, innit? Like he, he's, he's making things up as he goes along. And you're just really watching an, an artist 
and a genius at work because he stays calm under massive pressure. Like you wouldn't think he's a, he's a film director because he's just chilling and he's just having a laugh. But when push comes to shove, he's, he's getting the job done. So it's been interesting in that respect. Um, I've just enjoyed the full thing. Global. It just feels big, do you know what I mean? The project just feels international, global, so big. Something like that. Just Guy Ritchie in his, in his prime, do you know what I mean? Just flowing, do you know what I mean? Fluid, the way it's been created, is, is, it's been a fluid process. So even I'm excited to see the finished product, do you know what I mean? As an, as an actor, you don't see every single bit of it. Oh, there's loads. I mean, I look up to Guy. So for me to be able to spend time with him and, and just learn from him on a daily basis, it's too many to kind of say. But the highlight for me has been being around Guy, seeing the way he works and, and listening to the way he thinks as a, as a person. His kind of philosophy on life and the steaks what he makes. He makes a banging steak. So yeah, that really. Oh, driving and acting at the same time on an extreme level. So what they asked me to do with the, with the driving stuff was, okay then, JJ, you're gonna drive, but be on the laptop and say the lines. So guys actually in the back of the car telling me what to say. But obviously I'm having to keep a certain distance from the camera and I'm having to flip in, type in passwords. And it was mad. Like, it was, it was quite dangerous, to be honest. So I'm a stuntman as well as an actor, apparently. JJ, he's an up-and-coming guy. Um, and he's transferred over to being like, uh, like a private contractor. But before, he'd done some kind of government-type work. And, but now he's gone private, you know? So he's on the come-up and he's hungry, and he's kind of new, but at the point where I kind of come into it and meet um, Orson, uh, I've had experience, so people are shocked at the way I'm going on. I'm a good shot, good with dogs, um, and that's that. I'm the novice, but I'm a good novice. Just kind of impressing the boss. So Orson's above me. So he's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of honoured to work with him, as I am in real life working with Jason. Um, and I think that really comes across in my character that I'm just excited to just impress and let kind of Orson and, and Nathan know, like, I'm worthy of the position that they put me in. I used to box growing up, and I boxed for about four years, like um, pretty seriously, and then I've just kind of kept it up. I'm of a level of um, athleticism in terms of that. So to an extent, if it's not, I'd say like if it's not high kicks or spinning low kicks or like the crazy stuff, Anything else, spinning back fists, elbows, knees, I can throw them pretty, pretty well, you know, because I, I do a bit of that stuff back home and in the gym here. So it was just a case of having a little bit of an artillery, luckily, and then working with the stunt guys and finding what actually worked. And I've actually seen them scenes back, they do work. They look, they're serious, you know? So, yeah, I was just excited to punch something. So I just kind of got involved in, it's a really creative process, the way the guys build the, the fight scenes. Everybody just kind of gets involved until they figure out the end result. So I just kind of got involved there and 
started demonstrating a few little movements just to see what Guy liked and see what they thought I looked good doing. And we, and we found it, you know. Well, I think the, the, the best way to describe this film is just pure adrenaline. I mean, it, the, the energy of the film is, is really dictated by Guy's energy. And Guy is just, uh, I mean, there's no end to it. He's extraordinary. He has the energy of a teenager. And I think you can see that in his work, you know. I mean, he's, if, you, if you're flipping the channel on television and all you need to see is three or four frames of, of anything that's on, you know instantly that you're watching a Guy Ritchie movie. And that's because he has a very unique voice and a unique style of filmmaking. And uh, there's no one like him. There's just no one like him. There are people who, who try very hard to be like him, but, but there's only one Guy Ritchie. Well, I can say that with, without a doubt that this is the greatest experience I've ever had making a film in my whole career, you know. Um, and there have been some wonderful experiences I've had on other movies, but nothing compares to this one. Um, and I think that goes back to what I was saying earlier about Guy and his energy and his passion and his attention to detail. I mean, his canvases are very large, but his... The, the, the detail on that canvas is, is extraordinary. I mean, his, his focus is, is on everything, that nothing misses his eye. I mean, for instance, he'll come up and check my tie before we go on camera. I haven't experienced that since working with, you know, people like Coppola, you know, who, who have that kind of attention to detail. And, um, and uh, yeah, he's so joyful and he, he can do everything. You know, he'll, sometimes he'll act out the scene for all the actors and do all the parts. And, you know, obviously he knows where the camera goes. He knows about editing. He knows about lighting. He knows about costume. He knows about sound. All of it. There's not one part of the film, that the finished product that you're going to see, that he hasn't paid attention to. Not one part of it. And it's fascinating to watch. I've never seen anyone with that kind of... Uh, laser focus and he's able to do it really quickly I mean because his mind works very fast well I have a little bit of a notion about spying uh, my grandfather was a spy during World War II and um, and so he shared some stories with me um, for instance how to throw the enemy off the scent by checking into a hotel uh, and having a whole other life, another character that checks into a hotel that doesn't exist and making sure that whoever's following you or tailing you believes that that person is actually in that hotel. So room service and laundry, high dry cleaning, that kind of thing. It's all kept up so that the enemy will be fooled into paying attention to that person, not what you're actually doing, you know, that kind of thing. I think audiences can expect uh, pure adrenaline. I mean, that's, that's, that's just Guy Ritchie. He is pure adrenaline, you know, uh, and you get swept up in his, his passion. It's very easy to be. He's terribly charming and incredibly funny. And he creates that atmosphere on the set that is just, I think, incredibly conducive to, to creativity because he's, he's so relaxed and he makes sure that you're very relaxed. And, um, and you know, he has this fabulous crew, key crew of people that have worked with him since the beginning and they just, they just adore him. They'll, they'll, they'll do anything for him. And so it's a, it's a very warm atmosphere on the set. Yeah, great fun. Well, I'd, um, I'd obviously followed Jason's work, uh, like most people, and admired him for his talent. And uh, he turned out to be just as lovely and, and sweet and, and uh, giving as I'd heard he was, because uh, I, uh, I spoke to some actors, and we actually ended up having some mutual friends, which was nice. And um, so, yeah, he's, he's terrific and very giving and, and very funny. I think people are going to see another side to Jason in this movie where you see his sense of humor because he's very, very funny and, and 
I think Guy wanted to explore that more with this character, yeah. We had an idea about a spy film about eight months ago, I don't know, maybe more actually, eight. I don't know. And from that premise, we watched every action spy film we could get our hands on and uh, worked out the plots. I wrote this first scene uh, about six months ago, I think. And once I wrote the scene, I knew what the tone was for the film, and I like that tone. Uh, so, and up until then, I couldn't see how I was going to make this film. So once I wrote this, it influenced all the other scenes in the film, and then I knew what I was going to do. I think the set's brilliant, and it was a, it was the right idea. And the answer was was to build it. It's very much about if you find people that you like and correspond with, then why not do it again? I think by and large everyone's had a lovely time in Turkey, which is another thing. And uh, the more people are on the same frequency, then the more fun the whole process is, and the easier it is. So much of scenes is about, and dialogue is about a rhythm, and whether that rhythm, they understand the rhythm, your filmmaker understands the rhythm, and really the film is rhythmical, but in scenes, so if you listen to this one, it was when we started cobbling it together, there was no rhythm initially, it was just a structure, and then after five minutes you're starting to find a rhythm, after 15 minutes you go, da 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 and it sort of works, and unless scenes find a rhythm for me, I'm they feel hollow. Uh, I don't think this project was different in terms of working with guys. <laughs> it is an interesting process. It's not classic. Um, you know, the classic way of making a film is you have a script and you learn it and then you turn up and you shoot it. And you might make little adjustments script-wise, but they've been quite minor. With this, there's a sort of template script that uh, is then largely thrown out of the window when you get to the set to shoot it. And uh, the scene is kind of devised there and then uh, with the actors and, and Guy. So for someone like me, it's, it's both slightly alarming, particularly if you suddenly have a lot of lines that you haven't been able to learn because they're brand new. Uh, but also uh, quite exhilarating. I quite like improvising, is the truth. So I, I play um, someone called Greg Simmons, who's a billionaire arms dealer, who is motivated in life, well, by money. He loves money, but He's also one of those billionaires who's come to regard himself as a good man, despite the fact that he sells arms all over the world. He even has a charity for war orphans in a sort of delicious irony. And he thinks he's, uh, he thinks he has values. And he loves life, really, people and the people around him, his team, uh, big enthusiasm for uh, for everything, really, because uh, I think it's important. You've got to, you've got to quite enjoy your character, and I, I, I quite enjoy being Greg. Now, almost every actor prefers being a bad guy. I think I don't know why. They're, they're more fun. They're more delicious. I think. Uh, they can expect the, the usual Guy Ritchie uh, pleasures, stylish, it will look amazing, uh, it'll be snappy, it'll be funny, uh, it'll be uh, thrilling, and in this case it'll also have a lot of action, because you know we have Jason and uh, a lot of significant action sequences.
Yeah, so uh, I had never done anything with Jason before. I didn't know him. Uh, and I've come to really admire him. Uh, he's a nice guy. He's, he knows who he is and uh, knows what he likes and knows what he's good at. And he's really good at it. I've started watching little clips of his films when I have insomnia. They're brilliant. So I've loved doing stuff with him. Uh, I get on very well with Josh Hartnett. Uh, we had a big drunken night out in New York some years ago, and it was nice to see him again after that. And uh, Aubrey's a laugh. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, then, then there's an amazing cast of other characters, all, a lot of really good Brit actors. Uh, so it's, it's been great. Well, what drew me to the project is Guy. I mean, we did a film uh, last year as well, and uh, he called me uh, September or something and said he was writing another one, and, and he had a role for me, Danny Francesco, and I said, I, uh, yeah, I'd love to come back and play again. It's making fun of all the tropes of James Bond films, but also kind of giving the action and the comedy and all of that Front, making that front and center and not worrying about all the kind of ridiculous tropes that are, uh, that are used in those films. I love working with Jason. And again, we worked on the last one and I, Jason is a gentleman and he's a very, like, it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't know him beyond his persona because uh, he's just such a he's just such an easygoing nice guy he's he's in it to have a good time and uh, and he's professional and he's gracious and he's funny and uh, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed working with him both times Danny Francesco is an actor very well-known actor who is beloved but misunderstood because he's he's living a bit of a double life as a lot of actors are I think um, where in the persona that he's known for in the business and outside of the business is not it sort of hides the darker aspects of his character uh, when we find him he's been having an affair with his sister-in-law and uh, that is the dirt that Orson's, uh, that uh, Jason's character Orson has on him in order to get him to join this mission. And uh, Danny has a, he's a, he's like a lot of actors I think, he's attracted to power and becomes a bit obsessed with uh, Hugh Grant's character who is an arms dealer. Uh, so his, his sort of moral compass might be a little off, a little off, a little not particularly worried about these sort of things, just enamored with the person who's seem, seemingly the biggest, toughest person in the room. And uh, Danny wants to embody that, you know? He wants to be that himself. Uh, but he's a little bit of a, little bit of a scaredy cat. Uh, well, Danny, I think, I think he gets on with everybody in, in the movie because he, it's not his world and he's very much in charge of his own world and then when he's brought outside of it into this world of international es espionage he feels uh, out of his depth but, but he's studying, you know. He wants to bring back something to use it for a film role or to kind of better himself and take himself out of the world that he's been in. Um, I think Danny's just, he's looking for a new adventure and, and he finds it with these guys. Hugh is fun. Um, and, it, and it really is one of those where you don't know, because you prepare separately, right? And then you come into a scenario where the preparation is really just kind of the back of your head because we, the way Guy works is that everything is really in the moment. The, it's kind of chiseled into place on the set. And so you can prep how you want, and then he preps how he wants. And I didn't really realize the dynamic we were going to have until we got put together in our first scene at the, on the yacht. He's a very definitive filmmaker. 
in the way that you know people have certain styles and they're known for for a certain kind of film, although he he's been keeping us guessing you know for the past ten years um, with the switches of genre. But I think what what I really like about Guy is that he is so um, authentic about he almost has a sixth sense. You have to be on the same frequency as him because. He has a sixth sense about what rings true, and the truth can go any which way, but it doesn't matter which way the truth goes, because he's clear about what he wants. So you go there, so which is fun, because quite often, you know, the normal filmmaking is you get the script, everyone prepares, and it's everyone's on the page that was made from the very beginning. This one is, is like, it might be that, it might not be that, it might, might be so much more. People are nice, you know. You kind of always trust a director whose team has been there for many films. It means he's doing something right because he treats his people well. And you always trust that. Um, and, and because everyone around you is really comfortable. Because at first it, it can be quite daunting, you know, especially when there are actors who've worked with him. So it is a kind of uh, brotherhood, you, you know, there's, there's history between them, so you always feel like, oh, new kid on the block, so let me just, you know, keep my head down and, and you know, insert myself in that, but, um, but because they're so warm and friendly and, you know, make, you're just comfortable, you feel very free to do your job. Good people trying to do bad things and bad people trying to do good things. And both sides are trying to outfun each other. Amelia's job is to protect Greg Simmons, Hugh's character, um, in every way she can. Sometimes that means protecting him from himself. <laughs> Um, but I think she, I have this thing in my head about her that she, um, I read this line before and, and I think that perfectly encapsulates Amelia, which is that there's nothing more scary than a woman who is focused and unimpressed. And so far in this film, she's never, she hasn't smiled at all, <laughs> you know, so I feel like, mm, and that's part of the foil for everything that you can do because it's just you know it's really hard to not smile when he's riffing you because he goes off piece and you're just you want you smile you're laughing from deep inside and it wants to come out and you can't because in character it's just like withering the whole time you know um but yeah no i have a lot of fun with her so uh Well, Jason and I only had the one scene in the whole film. But he's so lovely. And also because we had mutual friends who he's worked with before, who's worked with Guy before. Um, but I did, I, I did ask them and, and you know, I was like, oh, you know, what's it like? And to help me get an idea of what I'm in for. And then they said, oh, yeah, I'll tell Jason, I'll tell Jason, you know, to look after you. And then so then I, I went on set and then sure enough, he was just like, oh, you know, so he knew me, um, knew of me. And uh, no, he's just a lovely guy. Um, yeah, he's, he's a lovely guy. You know, he's so good at what he does. Um, and to, to actually see it and then to be acting beside them, you're just like, oh, mate, yes, <laughs> I'm in the right place. Um, but yeah, I, I wish you had more to do, but it's, it's just in the film, it's the nature of it. I was drawn to the project because I wanted to work with Guy. Um, I met Guy 24 years ago um, on his first sort of main project, and then again in 99 uh, on his second, and neither prevailed. And so um, when this opportunity came around, I was delighted to uh, jump on board.
Working with Guy is interesting. It's kind of like, it's a very different experience from any other film experience I've had before. Um, I, uh, the best analogy I think I could give you is if you were in the Miles Davis quintet and Miles called you and said, I'm going to do a gig on Friday and it's going to be a sextet. I want you to bring your vibraphone and be in the band and we're going to open up with Stella by Starlight. Um, you would get on stage with the vibraphone and Miles would shout over, actually, we're going to do all the things you are or no, Cherokee at this tempo. One, two, two, two. And you're going to lead the solos in five, four, three, two. <laughs> so that's what it's like working um, with him. But it's brilliant because <clears throat> it's another tool that I think actors should have. I like that, you know, imp impulsive nuance and um, he's got a very sharp mind and uh, it's great for us to keep on reinventing the wheel you've got to be on your toes um, uh, with him there's no doubt about that he does uh, push you you know Bugsy's great Bugsy's great he's uh, it's been a pleasure meeting him you know he's a he's a Manchester boy as well and he's from Crumpsall and um, I didn't know much of his work before this at all and then my friends back in the UK are like, oh, we love him, he's the governor. And he's a very, very sharp guy, you know. Um, and he just tells me what he's reading. And I'm like, yeah, different man. He's reading, he's reading different things. He's reading about Napoleon. He's reading about different leaders and he's putting that into his work. And that's probably why he's a, a cut above the rest, you know. And he's a Manchester kid, so he's, he's lovely. He's a very nice lad. And it's only his second film and it's amazing that he's dropped in so well because he's, and I think that because of that, I think that because it is only his second film and he's not perhaps spent, you know, eight to 12 years learning specific things and technique and this and that, that that's maybe why he's good. I think, you know, technique can sometimes screw an actor up. It can, it can geld the natural nuance of someone's work if, if you like, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's brilliant that he's, uh, He's in both pictures. So I play Ben Harris, who is the consigliere to Hugh's character, uh, and Hugh plays um, Greg Simmons, Hugh Grant, of course. And Ben is, um, he's a broker really for most of the deals that go down for Mr. Simmons. And he's, um, it's a Machiavellian type character, um, quite voracious, um, quite tenacious. Um, and he's quite quiet, he's a reader of, of things. But it's funny because I said to Guy at one point, I was like, I think he's quite serious physically. I think he could do some damage. And Guy's like, mm, no, nah, he's a lawyer. There's going to be no fights. And I was like, oh, really and he's like yeah and i'm like you actually, you're actually right you know what i mean so that his power's here his power's here and he brokers all of the deals for greg and he he knows that uh, the dark side of uh the the world very well um so yeah it's been nice playing that and hughes uh just been just been fantastic to watch work you know when he's working he's he's excellent um and very generous and very kind and nice so that's been great. Um, and yeah, that's about it really with Ben, Ben Harris. I mean, we, we, Guy's been very gracious as well with, we've, we've, we've thrown a lot of extra stuff in there, you know. I think that the audiences can expect much of what they would expect from a Guy Ritchie movie, which is high octane, high energy, um, pastiches, colours. I, I, I like in his films to like, there's a celebration in India, isn't there, where it, it's coloured powdered um, paint. And I, and I feel like that it, most of Guy's films, have the, they're so rich in, in, in these pastiches of colours. And this is that with this specific genre that we're in, with the world of, you know, billionaire tech people and double dealing and secret agents and this and that and l luxurious locations. So 
it's a lot of fun with some narrative there as well, obviously, um, otherwise you wouldn't engage the audience.